Absolutely. Uh, speaking of um, stuff like that, the signings of Bruce Irvin, the signings of Tyson Alulalu, we have a man to break it all down. John Macaron, oh. the host of the Need Charge Sports Podcast, and of course, publisher All Lions, a good friend of the show, and the legend, the, the voice of reason. Welcome to the show, John. Look at, oh my God, JB, hey. what are we doing here? Oh. Let's go. JB's cooking, John. Uh, number one, I want to ask you, I want your thoughts on the uh, Tyson Alu Alu. Is that, is that, is that, is that, how you say Alu-alu. 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 Whatever the hell it is, John. I want your thoughts on Tyson, the signing of Tyson Alu Alu, <laughs> and then maybe the Nadamik and Sue talk for uh, people that maybe hope for him to return to Detroit. Yeah, fellas. I'm not sure who's more desperate. Aaron Glenn looking for help or Troy Weaver looking for players that can Ooh. put the ball in the basket. That Look, man, it's December. Ooh. I know you're trying to improve that defensive line and try to get pressure in any way. But yeah, you're just not going to go out there and find a stud. So that's what the Lions are doing. They're just trying to go out and find guys that are still that have had experience playing along the interior of the defensive line. Look, he does have a previous relationship with Isaiah Bugs with the Steelers. So he'll come in and he'll provide the room with additional you know, information, how to be a pro, how to handle business. But yeah, of course, he's not going to be available this week. Maybe he'll get in against the Broncos. But yeah, you're just looking for guys that are just bodies that can help just in case an injury happens. And unfortunately, Aleem McNeil goes down. So you're going to be counting on Bruce Irvin and Tyson Alualu to potentially help your defensive line. It's a struggle. It's unfortunate. They're not playing to their capability, but they're trying to find any and all avenues to do it. And I just think that for those that are clamoring for Indomitian Sue, it's a little bit weird because he shunned your nose. He shunned his nose at Lions fans. He basically, from the time he got here, was planning to be a, con- a conglomerate. He wanted to be a businessman. He never really wanted to set roots here in Detroit. And when he had his opportunity to bust out, he took a free agent deal and moved on. So I just think that the clamoring for Indomitian and Sue is cute, but I understand that people love his nastiness and he embodies what Dan Campbell would want. But I just think that that, that ship has sailed. Doc, you mentioned uh, Ali McNeil, unfortunately, being out. What is something specifically about Ali McNeil's absence that could hurt the Lions' defense going into a matchup with the Chicago Bears against the Chicago Bears team in which Justin Fields actually had one of his better games of the season there in their last matchup at Ford Field? Yeah, it's a significant loss. Obviously, he was having the best season of his career, put in the work in the offseason to shed weight, to be more versatile, to be able to play more. Um, I thought that he was effective in the run game, was starting to improve steadily. His uh, ability to rush the passer is not going to be elite like an Aaron Donald, but I think he was putting himself up there when you look at the rankings as among the top 10 interior defensive linemen. So it's a loss. And you look at the replacements, it's okay but are you confident in Levi Onzerike, Isaiah Bugs, Benito Jones? It just further diminishes a defensive line that was struggling. And you realize at Ford Field, the Bears put up over 170 yards rushing. Hmm. So I think that the Bears are going to be confident potentially to look that side, uh, to look that way to rush the football. So it's a problem. It's an issue. But these guys that will be given the opportunity will now be will we'll finally determine if Levi owns Rike is a bust. He'll have his opportunity, but he's been in and out of the lineup. I know people are clamoring for Isaiah Bugs. Check out All Lions a little bit later today. I spoke to him for about five, six minutes in the locker room. I've kind of developed a rapport with him over this season, and I know it's tough, and we can kind of clearly understand a little bit of what's going on between Isaiah and the organization. But he's working his way, trying to get his opportunity. If he does see playing time this week, he'll have to definitely showcase that he belongs on the field because I think that there's several guys ahead of him on the depth chart. But it's a defensive line that's struggling, and losing Ali McNeil is definitely not going to help. And the Isaiah Bugs thing is is super interesting, John, because it seemed like he was a player. I mean, they trusted him so much, they gave him an extension. And then at this point now, he's getting beat by other guys. I, and I don't want you to give too much away because you'll have all the information later. But is it is it just simply Isaiah Bugs is not playing good enough? Is that it? And they just expect more out of him? Or is there more of like a personal beef going on is it just his play on the field just so I could clear that up yeah absolutely I have no problem sharing I think that when you have an opportunity to hear from a player from his own words people will come and listen to the podcast I have no problem so look obviously he signed an extension and he was part of the Lions plans well things some some things happened over the offseason in regards to his involvement in OTAs maybe didn't ingratiate himself fully to the coaching staff in regards to being all in 
So obviously, you know, the coaching staff's going to be like, hey, you, you weren't here for OTAs. Now, it was for family reasons, but he wasn't there. So obviously, the coaching staff is going to potentially put him in the doghouse. Now, when things change regarding probably him being told, okay, look, you're going to be behind these guys, what did you see happen? He went to social media, took down all his affiliation with the Lions, discussed things change, caused a stir online. That's not something that the Lions are going to appreciate in any capacity. While Dan Campbell is a player's coach, he's not going to want his players making noise on social media. That's the antithesis of everything that they would want. Look, right. I know you guys got Kool-Aid there in the booth. I know he's pissed off right now having to cover the, the Pistons. But if he goes on social media and is like, I got this dog shit job right now. I can't believe it. I want out. <laughs> There's going to be an issue. You know? I know he can't say that. He'll tell that to me maybe privately. Maybe, yeah. maybe not. I love you, but, that. But, <laughs> but I think that Isaiah Bugs did not do himself any favors by his actions when things didn't go his way. But I will give him credit. Over the course of the last few weeks, when you ask him directly about his playing time, he, he does now speak the way in which a player should address it with the media more professionally, like, hey, it's my opportunity. And I asked Dan Campbell directly in the media session, what does Bugs have to do in order to beat out these other guys? And he gave the, co the coach speak, be consistent, do your job, be dependable, be reliable. And so I just think that for right now, you're right. I just think that they want to give others opportunities, and Isaiah Bugs is going to have to be spectacular. When he gets his reps, he better get a couple, a couple of sacks in order to keep his playing time. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to shift gears a little bit to the offensive side of the football. So do you expect the Lions offense to have a good day against the Bears, or do you think the Bears defense can give the Lions some problems? They're playing well, John. Yeah, they are. It's, it's interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to this weekend's contest. You look at it, and it, if weather is involved, you would think that the Lions are going to rely heavily on the run game. But I would trust David Montgomery and Jameer Gibbs. I think it's a one-two punch that can handle business. I think that the offensive line definitely is encouraged by their play. I know it stinks that Frank Ragnow potentially could miss this contest, but I think that when you look at the Lions, the best way for them to have success is to establish the run. David Montgomery returning back to Chicago, extra motivation. Jameer Gibbs, the explosiveness. And then, guys, like I said last week, right here on the show, I think that Sam Laporta may be definitely motivated to hit that record to break the rookie tight end receiving record uh, that was held by Mike Ditka. So when you see these weapons, I just think that the Lions definitely, um, if they can improve upon their play in the red zone, score touchdowns, and Ben Johnson being a little bit more creative in certain spots, I like the, the Lions' opportunities to score a bunch of points. The weather will be a factor, but I think that this is sets up for how the Lions want to play offensively. Smash mouth football, control the game, and uh, definitely get some yards on the ground. Yeah, play right into Dan Campbell's preferred uh, <laughs> that's play style there. Yeah. John, I want to ask you, because you, you know more than any of us, just the update on some of the injuries, Alex Anzalone, kind of his situation. Um, I know Aline McNeil, he's on IR officially, but C.J. Gardner-Johnson, I've seen some of those rumors that he's trying to get back quicker than and maybe even the coaching staff will, will let him get back. Can you give us an update on some guys that are, that are out that are trending uh, back to the lineup? Yeah, Wednesday typically is a wild day at, in Allen Park. Ch uh, I always love joy chatting with Matt out there. Uh, Broder's the man. And then all of a sudden, we get into the locker room, and there's a surprise individual. James Houston was there, and he's talking, and he's sitting there. I'm like, we were talking at first with Jared Goff, and all of a sudden, there's James Houston having a, a media session. So he's thinking he's going to come back and potentially play one or two games before the playoffs. So maybe a little bit of an opportunity for him to get back. He says, I'm a game changer. And you could just sense his confidence that, okay, we have this potential individual that had eight sacks last year coming back. So maybe look out for him over the next couple of weeks. He could be returning. Maybe if not for the, the, the last couple of games there, maybe against Dallas or uh, Minnesota, he might, he, he wants his opportunity to potentially play one or two games before the playoffs. Yeah, C.D. Deuce is interesting. You know, obviously we all saw that social media post December 20th, but I just think that, you know, similar to um, a lot of players, if he does come back, maybe they'll hold him off until the postseason. I think that the Lions like to, you know, when, they, when the players come back, have them acclimate for a week or two. Uh, you look at Frank Ragnow, obviously that's a tough situation for him. Yeah. Uh, Ali McNeil's injury was obviously tough going on IR. And you look at Alex Antelone, he told reporters, that he should be, based on his pain tolerance, he should be available. Had surgery, had a screw placed there in his thumb, and, and, and now is going to have the opportunity to get back. He seemed confident 
that he'll return and that will bolster the defense. Yeah, it's a tough situation to lose one of your key defenders, but I just think that the Lions moving forward have potentially, if they can get back C.D. Deuce, James Houston, that makes it a lot more comfortable to potentially win a playoff game. Yeah, no question. We appreciate you, John. You're the man. Thank By you. the way, check out John's stuff. He's the host of the Detroit Sports Podcast. You can find him on X, Twitter, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, he's also the publisher for All Lions. That's One cool. of the best in the city. John, we appreciate you, man, your presence every single Thursday. Thank you. No problem. I was talking to my Lebanese friend, Adam, and we're talking. <laughs> we got to figure out a way to get Troy Weaver out of there. I mean, the man's a disgrace. <laughs> 18 straight losses. There's a chance. Now, look, I have to be honest. I'm rooting for it. Lose the rest of the games. This yeah. month, go two months without winning a game. What a story that would be if you put together this mishmash of shit and can't win a game for two months. <laughs> Man, I, I, I think me and my friend Adam got to talk more and find a way to get Troy Weaver out of the position that he's in because he's stealing a lot of money, and it's unfortunate. The fans are – look, this is a basketball town too. A lot of smart people like Kool-Aid out there. They don't deserve to be covering what the hell has been putting out there for the last two months. He said two losing months and Kool-Aid started shaking in his boots a little bit. He, you know what? <laughs> hey, two and eighty, John. I'm down with an F it. I don't even care. Two and eighty, point. baby. Two and eighty. I feel like you got a drop for that one, uh, John. Yeah, we need, Yeah, no question. What the hell is that about? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, John. We well, appreciate you, thanks, man, John. a ton. All right, let's head to break here. We get back. Uh we'll talk more Lions here. We'll kind of recap some of the things John said, some of the things Dan Campbell said uh, at his press conference yesterday. But first, I gotta tell you about it. 